it's Deja with Knit and Crochet Ever After and today we have a new tutorial. We have the eyelet scarf in knit. I did the perfect summer scarf in crochet and this is kind of like its counterpart. You can see why I'm calling it the eyelet scarf. It's got these nice big eyelets throughout. I like this pattern because it's reversible. You, When you have a scarf, you don't really wanna have to worry about which side is facing out when you're throwing it on when you're cold. So even though there is a right and wrong side, this um, is the right side, this is the wrong side. Can you tell? No, cause it's like, psh, it looks great from both sides. So don't worry about it. So get the pattern down below and we'll get started. Okay, so for materials, we did about 400 yards of Cascade Yarns Merino Dreams hand painted in color 107. I love this colorway. It's so pretty. The greens and pinks and creams, they just, it looks so pretty. And variegated yarn is difficult. When you get it, it looks so beautiful in the hank and then you work with it and you're like, I don't know what to make because it just looks like a muddled mess. So I tried to pick a stitch pattern that kind of didn't make it look muddled, but gave it, you know, it's time to shine in this colorway or in this type of yarn. So this eyelets really kind of break it up and then also your little spaces in between get a little bit more of that color. So hopefully um, you like that. You don't have to do hand painted. You don't have to do variegated. You can do a solid color and it will work out just as well. Um, this is a very easy beginner project. You can, it's a really simple two stitch repeat um, besides the borders and a four row repeat, but three of the rows are knit. So I'm gonna show you how to keep track of those three knits before you do your special row without having to like mark it down. So I'll show you just the little trick that I look for when I'm working this so that I know when it's an eyelet row. So this is a pretty thin yarn. Um, because you can really make this in anything, this, um, if you're doing, and it doesn't give what weight it is on the ball band, but I'm gonna say it's like between a lace and a sport because the suggested needle sizes are like two to three millimeter. So I did a 2.5 millimeter US 1.5, and I like the drape of it. I like that it's not too stiff, but if you wanted to make this in worsted, you could, reduce the stitches unless you want it wider and go with a bigger needle. You know, it's very customizable. It's very easy to change it up because of how short that stitch repeat is. Oh, enough about that. Let's get going with the actual pattern. So we're doing a very simple few garter row border at the edge. I'm gonna show you how to keep track of your edging garter that we're gonna do and work that body and then we'll come back and just talk a little bit more and you'll be all set. Okay, so to begin the scarf, you're going to cast on the required number of stitches in the pattern. But what's great about this actual stitch pattern is it's only two stitches long. So as long as you have your edge stitches, you can make the actual scarf whatever you want in multiples of two. So we're gonna start with our edging of the scarf and that is just gonna be four rows of knit. So we're gonna do a stockinette stitch edging on the bottom and the sides to keep it from rolling or from curling up. And it's just gonna be four rows of stockinette. You're gonna place some stitch markers and. I love having stitch markers on the project so that I don't have to think about when to start my edging. So we're putting four at the front after putting one after the first four stitches and one before the last four stitches to remind us that when we get to those stitch markers or at the very beginning and then we stop at the stitch marker, we're just doing knit stitch so that we have an edging on that scarf. So I'm gonna do three more rows of knit and then we'll come back to do the actual stitch pattern. Okay, I've got my four rows and I've got my stitch markers added at four stitches in from each edge so that we can continue our stockinette up the side. Obviously, this is not the same amount of stitches as in the pattern because that's in a worsted weight, I believe, or a, no, it's more of a DK weight, it's smaller. 
So, but you can see, you could do this with a super bulky, whatever, this is just kind of easier to see for the stitches. So we're going to do our stitch repeat now. This is the one fancy row that we're going to do. Everything else is just knit stitches, which I love, makes it so easy. So we knit to the stitch marker, one, two, three, four, and again that keeps our edges from curling. We'll slip the stitch marker and then our super easy two stitch repeat. So we're going to yarn over and when you, we're going to do a purl two together. So when you're doing the purl two together, you kind of keep going with your yarn over because you have to bring your yarn to the front for your purls. So it's kind of like a big gigantic wrap. It almost feels weird when you're doing it. So wrap it all the way around, put your needle through both loops, purl that, those two stitches off and repeat. So yarn over, purl through two, purl two together, <laughs> and say purl through two, um, and we just keep doing that. We yarn over, we go through one and two, purl those off, and then one last one for me. You'll have more if you're following the pattern, but you get really used to this. Then we're going to slip our marker and we're going to knit. So I told you I would give you kind of a tip because now we're going to do row six, seven, and eight, and they're all knit. So there is a way to tell when you need to do that special stitch because you're going to repeat that row and the three rows of knit that we're about to do. There's kind of a way to tell so that you don't have to keep track of which row of the three that you're on if you're not super familiar on how to count those rows. So I'm going to show you that. I'm going to get through these three rows and come back and show you that trick. Okay, so I've done two of my three rows of knit. So I wanted to show you what this looks like because when it's in the smaller yarn, it's a little bit more difficult to see. So I wanted to kind of give you this big yarn view and then show you what that third row looks like. But you can see we have those holes that are created with the yarn overs. And then we have the purl bumps right against the top. No second row of purl bumps. And this is where my working yarn is. So I'm looking and I'm like, okay, I have one row of purl bumps. So I still have one more row to go. So we're going to do one more and then it'll make, and then the other side, you'll see double purl bumps. Okay. So that's important. So let's do one more row of knit and this you can make as long as you want, you know, and you can make the border wider if you want. You can put more stockinette on the edges or make it less. If you're going to do like a bulky like this, you could probably just get away with two stitches on each edge. It would work totally. So we're getting this last row of knit. Do I have enough slack here? Here we go. And then let's look at it because after this row, we then do our yarn over purl two togethers. So here's the row we just finished. Now we can see the double purls in the front. And if we turn it around, we get three purl bumps is what I call it. We have the double and then one right against. So remember the last row we just had this long thing showing with one row of purl bumps. This one we have double purl bumps and the single row of purl bumps. So that is your indicator that it's now time to do your um, purl two togethers. So that's your visual cue as compared to that last row. Cause when you get going and it's in the smaller yarn, you're going to be like, did I do two rows or did I do three rows? And you're going to forget, but that is going to help you to remember, look for the kind of three purl bumps. So we have, you know, the, these two are on top of each other and this one by itself. So after that, when you see those three, you're going to do your stitch repeat again. So the same thing, you're going to knit, then you're going to do your yarn overs and purl two togethers and continue all the way till the very end. And I ended with two, um, actually I did four, just like we did 
on this edge and then I bound off knitwise so that I got the same kind of edge that I have here. So when you are, let's see, what am I doing here? Did I do a pull two together? I don't think so. <laughs> I did one purl. Um, so when you are getting to the near the end of your yarn, if you're just going to keep going until you run out of yarn, just leave yourself about five rows of knit stitch that you can finish so that you get a matching edge on this side and you'll be good to go. Otherwise you might have to unknit a couple things. This isn't too bad to unknit when you have to unknit purl twos together. Just kind of just slip your needle through both of those and pull them back and you're good to go. <laughs> They're very easy to unknit. So that is all you're doing. You're just doing those four rows over and over again until you're totally done and that will be the entire scarf. So let's go do some final thoughts. So you finished your scarf, hopefully. We probably aren't all the way through it watching this video, but you will finish it eventually. Um, I just wanted to talk a little bit. I did not block this. This is how it came off my needles. This yarn worked out really well. I could block maybe the edges to get them a little bit more crisp, so I might do that, but my actual edge is pretty good. But if you found that maybe you were stressed out when you were making it one day and really relaxed the next and your sides are kind of coming in and out, block it and make it straight. It will work. So definitely use blocking to your advantage, but you don't really need it. Like I, I like it as it is. I'm good to go. I, I will save myself some blocking pain because um, I love blocking how it looks. I don't like blocking as the process. It's just, you know, it takes time out of your day. So if you like it, move on. Otherwise block it. So that is the eyelet scarf. If you make one, tag me. Go post it on Instagram, tag me. I'd love to see what you're making. Post it on Facebook and tag me. I love seeing what you guys do with these patterns. Stripe it, do it all, you know, make it your own. But I am Deja with Knit and Crochet Ever After. Follow me if you wanna see more free tutorials. And thank you for watching.